നേച്ചർ മാറ്റേഴ്സ് കണ്ണൂർ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ഡിഗ്രി ഫസ്റ്റ് ഇയർ സെക്കൻഡ് സെമസ്റ്റർ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് കോമൺ കോഴ്സ് റീഡിങ്സ് ഓൺ ലൈഫ് ആൻഡ് നേച്ചർ ടു എ സീറോ ത്രീ ഇ എൻ ജി ദ ഫിഷ് എ പോയം ബൈ എലിസബത്ത് ബിഷപ്പ് Elizabeth Bishop is an American poet of 20th century. She was quite different from other writers of her period. Mostly men. And she differs in her life and so in poetry. she had a very unpleasant childhood life later she shifted herself to brazil and lived with a lady architect there for almost 15 years she had traveled extensively through europe also africa and went back to america and had taught for some time in harvard university apart from giving the usual side of women's questions associated with the rejection of patriarchy male domination elizabeth bishop displays her ecological concerns that lead her to accept a relationship of coexistence among human and non-human beings there are many rightful inheritors of this earth biodiversity is to be retained and the earth is not something that is for the consumption of human beings earth is not a real estate for man's profit nature in this poem by bishop is not for assuming establishing man's superiority over any non human beings animals or nature at large unlike the fish hunt that we see in herman melville's moby dick or ernest hemingway's old man and the sea here in this poem fish is not something that is other to human beings or something that is to be conquered or defeated bishop articulates a cure post human politics it is important to note that the animal is a privileged entity in her work appearing throughout poems like fish her representations of animals are democratic not in any sense lesser than the human or tied to any hierarchic category 
the animal may be positioned in a reciprocal relationship to the writer herself. Human-centered assumption concerning man's dominance over animal is not honored in Bishop's poems in general. The fish is a poem about the catching and landing of a very big fish. A real experience she had during one of her fishing trips in Florida. Like the fish she had caught, the poem also is tremendous. The fish Elizabeth Bishop. I caught a tremendous fish and held him beside the boat half out of water with my hook fast in a corner of his mouth. He didn't fight. He hadn't fought at all. He hung a grunting weight, battered and venerable and homely. Here and there, his brown skin hung in strips like ancient wallpaper and its pattern of darker brown was like wallpaper. Shapes like full-blown roses, stained and lost through age. He was speckled with barnacles, fine rosettes of lime, and infested with tiny white sea lice. And underneath, two or three racks of green weed hung down, while his gills were breathing in the terrible oxygen, the frightening gills, fresh and crisp with blood that can cut so badly. I thought of the coarse white flesh packed in like feathers, the big bones and the little bones, the dramatic reds and blacks of his shiny entrails, and the pink swim bladder like a big peony. I looked into his eyes, which were far larger than mine, but shallower and yellowed the iris is packed and packed with tarnished tin foil, seen through the lenses of old scratched icing glass. They shifted a little, but not to return my stare. It was more like the tipping of an object toward the light. I admired his sullen face, the mechanism of his jaw. And then I saw that from his lower lip, if you could call it a lip, grim, wet and weapon-like, hung five old pieces of fish line or four and a wire leader with the swivel still attached, with all their five big hooks grown firmly in his mouth. A green line frayed at the end where he broke it. Two heavier lines 
and a fine black thread still crimped from the strain and snap when it broke and he got away like medals with their ribbons frayed and wavering a five-haired beard of wisdom trailing from his aching jaw i stared and stared and victory filled up the little rented boat from the pool of bilge where oil had spread a rainbow around the rusted engine to the baler rusted orange the sun cracked thoughts the oar locks on their strings the gunnels until everything was rainbow 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 and i let the fish go the poem is a celebration of the shared ability of the poet and the fish to triumph over adversity the poet succeeds in catching a tremendous fish and pulls him half out of water with her fish hook lodged firmly in the corner of his mouth but the fish doesn't fight at all instead the fish merely hangs on the line thereby giving the poet a chance to observe him closely he is obviously an old fish the poet is owed by his age and the evidence of his previous battles and realizes that he is not different from herself from all of us he too has struggled to survive in a world that can be incredibly hostile and now he is tired too tired to fight any more at the end she is happy to be able to release such a survivor who has suffered so much hardship and fought strongly in the past the poem fish written in an intimate first person style takes the readers directly into the action from the first line with i caught a tremendous fish as the poem progresses the speaker's identification with the fish develops this poem shifts in a subtle way from the initial pride of the fisher woman cooking a tremendous fish to a great admiration of the fish before the fisher woman finally lets the fish go she has master the art of losing for the sake of love and care for fellow beings here a fish though it is a he it doesn't the fish doesn't assert its masculinity instead it's calm quiet composed and dignified 
the speaker implies that the fish is a wise old warrior and the hooks are like medals a veteran's medals it has survived five attempts on its life and so it is deserving a reward freedom this raises a bigger moral issue that of the dominance of the human over the animal kingdom the speaker holds life and death in her hands what shall she do with the power in her hand the fisher woman has now become one with the fish the great survivor women join hands with nature in the act of survival in this human centered world here lies the ethics of the aesthetics of this poem the theme of the poem is very much familiar to we people through a nursery song one two three four five once i caught a fish alive six seven eight nine ten then i let it go again the great existential dilemma of the modern male is undermined through a simple act of freeing the fish back to its natural habitat the poet describes the old hooks on the lips of the fish as medals of honor they represent the tough spirit of the fish that successfully escapes death the hardy nature and strength as perceived in the poem would remain one of the animals we are familiar with in the poems of poets ranging from william blake to ted hughes they are not symbolic of anything human here also the fish doesn't represent any human condition when reading it readers will notice the dashes in the poem bishop chose this form of punctuation to make the readers pause and consider what she says the speaker's own uncertainty could be seen in it This one stanza poem stretches down the page a meditative poem it is written in free verse there is no specific pattern of rhyme or meter to the lines in total there are 76 lines contained within a single stanza the lines are of all similar length fairly short a painterly poet that bishop is the poem is full of vivid imagery and figurative language the poet going deep into the act of the capture and coming up with a wonderfully 
evocative end. There is a flood of similes and metaphors in the poem. The skin of the fish is compared to a wallpaper. The metaphoric expression seen through the lenses of old ice and glass and the like are simple examples to cite a few. The symbols like the rainbow are used in the poem to evoke beauty to the climax of the poem where both the living things celebrate victory not over each other but on the whole repressive ideas of the world which have kept them as the other. Rainbow has certainly acquired recently another symbolic status as in the case of gender and its fluidity. Comprehension questions. 1. How did the poet hold the fish she caught? The poet held the fish beside the boat half out of water with a hook fastened in a corner of his mouth. 2. Why did the fish fight to get away from the poet? The fish had fought many times before now and now it is tired of fights. 3. Describe how the fish hangs from the poet's road. The fish hangs from the fishing road with a grunting weight. It was battered but looked venerable. 4. Explain terrible oxygen. The fish was half out of water. It couldn't breathe as it has lost its natural habitat. 5. How does the poet describe the fish's skin? The brown skin hung in strips is compared to that of a worn out wallpaper having shapes like full blown roses. 6. Why does the poet look into the eyes of the fish? The poet looks into his eyes which were larger than her. She looked at it out of compassion. 7. Does the poet admire the fish? Why? The poet admires the fish because it is respectable and wise. It has suffered a lot but survived. It hasn't become a victim to man's torture. 8. Name the things that hang from the lips of the fish. Five old pieces of fish line and a wire leader with five big hooks are the things that hung from the lips of the fish. 9. What does the poet see in the eyes of the fish? The eyes of the fish are large, shallow, yellowed and the irises are backed and packed with the tarnished tin foil seen through the lenses of old scratch ice and glass. 10. How does the poet describe the entrails of the fish? The coarse white flesh was packed in like feathers. The bones and the shiny entrails of red and black and the pink swim bladder appeared like a big flower. 11. Explain Victory filled up the little rendered boat. The poet 
could identify herself with the fish as a survivor she becomes aware of the need to live together to resist the onslaught of men 12 explain the lines rainbow 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 this line embodies the final discovery of human connection with all flora and fauna of this world it's a moment of mutual love here is a translation of the poem mean elizabeth bishop പിടിച്ചു ഞാനൊരു കൊടിയ മീനിനെ കവിളിൽ ചൂണ്ടയാൽ കൊളുത്തി വള്ളത്തോടടുപ്പിച്ചു നിർത്തി പകുതി വെള്ളത്തിൻ വെളിയിൽ ഉളഞ്ഞതില്ലവൻ ചെറുത്തതുമില്ല കനത്തു തൂങ്ങിയോൻ ഉടൽ തകർന്ന് മാന്യമായി സരളമായി അവിടവിടെയായി തവിട്ട് ചർമ്മം കീഴടർന്ന് തൂങ്ങുന്നു ചിരപുരാതന ചുമർചിത്രം പോലെ വിടർന്ന പൂ കാലക്രമേണ വാടും പോലെ അവന് പുള്ളികൾ കടൽ ചെല്ലാൽ നല്ല വെളുത്ത ചുണ്ണാമ്പാൽ അടിയിൽ തൂങ്ങുന്നു കളകൾ രണ്ടു മൂന്നിഴകൾ പച്ചകൾ മുറിവേൽപ്പിക്കുവാൻ കഴിയും ചോര ചെം ചെക ചെകിളകൾ ചുറുചുറുക്കോടെ ഘോരം വലിക്കുന്നു ശ്വാസം ഇടയ്ക്ക് ഞാൻ ഓർത്തു പരുക്കനാമതിൻ വെളുത്ത തൂവൽ പോലടുക്കിയ മാംസം കടും ചുവപ്പിന്റെ കുടലുകൾ എല്ലിൻ പല വലുപ്പങ്ങൾ തുടുത്ത പൂവുപോൽ തുഴകൾ പാടലം അവന്റെ കൺകളോ വിശാലം എന്നേക്കാൾ അത് മഞ്ഞ ചാഴം കുറഞ്ഞതാം പക്ഷേ പഴകിപ്പോയ അഭ്രമിളകിയ ചില്ലിനിടയിലൂടെ കാണ്മത് തുരുമ്പിച്ച തകിടിൽ ചുട്ടെടുത്തടുക്കിയ കൃഷ്ണമണികൾ ഞാൻ നോക്കി അവ അനങ്ങിയത് എനിക്ക് നേർക്കല്ല അവ വെളിച്ചത്തിൽ മലർന്നു വീണ പോൽ അവനെ ആദരിപ്പു ഞാൻ ഉദാസീന മുഖത്തെ താടിയെല്ല് അതിൻ പ്രവർത്തനം അവന്റെ കീഴ്ചുണ്ടിൽ അത് ചുണ്ടാണെങ്കിൽ കിടന്നു തൂങ്ങുന്നു അണച്ചു വെച്ചൊരായുധം കണക്കെ ഉഗ്രം പഴയ ഒരഞ്ച് മീൻ പിടിക്കും ചൂണ്ടകൾ അതല്ലവൻ വായിൽ വളർന്നു നിൽപ്പൂ നാലധികം ഒന്നഞ്ച് വളഞ്ഞ സൂചികൾ അവൻ കുതറിയ സമയം പൊട്ടിയ ഇരുൾ തുടലുകൾ കനത്തവ പച്ച കിടപ്പുണ്ട് ഒട്ടേറെ വിവേകത്തിൻ അഞ്ചു നരച്ച രോമങ്ങൾ പതക്കമായി തൂങ്ങി കഴച്ച താടിയിൽ മിഴിച്ചു നോക്കവേ നിറഞ്ഞു വാടകക്കെടുത്ത വള്ളത്തിൽ വിജയം മാരുവില്ല് അഴുക്കുവെള്ളത്തിൽ ഒലിച്ചൊരിറ്റെണ്ണ വരഞ്ഞതു മുതൽ തുരുമ്പിച്ച യന്ത്രം തുരുമ്പ് കോരിക തുഴ വിജാഗിരി അതിൻ ചരടിന്മേൽ ഇരിപ്പിടം സൂര്യൻ കരിച്ചതിൽ തുഞ്ചം സമസ്തവും നിറമഴവില്ലായി പിന്നെ അവനെ വിട്ടു ഞാൻ 